In this video, we're going to start to talk about block level elements in HTML. Basically, what a block level element does is any content directly following the block level element will be rendered on a new line. So let's take a look at this in some code. Let's create a new HTML file, title this block.html. Double click on it to open it in our text editor and type out our HTML5 document structure. Our meta tag for the char set, our character encoding, UTF-8, our title, and we're going to give this a title of block level in HTML5. Go ahead and make sure this is properly indented. The title tag should be in line with our meta tag as they are both inside the head section. And then our body. Right, so now we have our HTML5 document structure. We can create some block level elements. The most common block level element is a logical division, denoted by the opening and closing div tags. This creates a div element or a logical division. Logical divisions are used commonly in HTML as they allow us to break up our HTML document into different sections and segments. So this is a logical division. What I'm going to do is put some text directly following the logical division or block level element so we can take a look at what the block level element actually does in our browser. I'm going to go ahead and save this and preview it in our browser. As you can see, we have two lines of text. So this is a logical division, is inside the logical division. This text directly after the logical division on the same line is directly following the logical division. But as you can see, the content following the logical division will be rendered on a new line. So let's take a look at what happens if we put some text before the logical division. Save this, preview in our browser. And as you can see, the text entered in before the block level element is rendered on one line. The block level element is rendered on a new line and the text after the block level element is also rendered on a new line. So that's basically what block level elements do by nature. So let's take a look at some other block level elements. We have the paragraph element denoted by the opening and closing p tags We also have a horizontal rule, which looks exactly like that. It looks a little bit different to the other elements or tags that we've seen recently, as this doesn't have its own closing tag. In earlier versions of HTML, we would have had to have done something like this. But as of HTML5, this is a valid horizontal rule. We also have lists. We have two kinds of lists in HTML, an ordered list and an unordered list. An ordered list is denoted by the OL opening and closing tags. Inside a list, we have things called list items, denoted by the LI opening and closing tags.
So let's save this and take a look in our browser and see how this ordered list renders in the browser. As you can see, we have a paragraph, which is just some standard text, followed by a horizontal rule, which is actually spanning the width of the page. And now we have our ordered list. As you can see, the list items inside the ordered list are listed by numeric values. Let's take a look at the other kind of list in HTML. The unordered list, denoted by the UL opening and closing tags. And just like the ordered list, the unordered list also has list items. So let's save this and take a look in our browser. As you can see, the unordered list is listed by dot points or bullets if you like. In HTML, we also have things called headings. These are denoted by the letter H and then a numeric value between one and six opening and closing tags. So we could have a H1, a H2, a H3, 4, 5 or H6 opening and closing tag creating a heading. So let's create the six different kinds of headings. A level 2 heading a level 3 heading level 4 level 5 and finally level 6 let's go ahead and save this and preview it in our browser. As you can see, we have quite an array of headings, ranging in size from a level one heading all the way down to a level six heading. They all have their uses. So a level one heading would be useful for something like an absolute page heading, and maybe a level two heading would be good for something like a subheading. These are all block level elements, so they all do the same thing by nature, as I explained with the logical division. So I hope you've learned a little bit about block level elements in HTML5.